Hello, happy Thursday, oh, no, Thursday afternoon to you. I hope uh, this video is finding you happy and well. I don't have um, a leggings picture to show you today because I'm wearing a beautiful rainbow floor length um, sundress. So even though it's, it's crappy as hell here, weather wise, um, I just wanted to wear something a little bit more cheery. Um, so I already had pulled a, what do you call it? A sticker of the day uh, the video I was doing earlier I had to delete so instead of picking a whole nother thing uh, a whole nother sticker I decided I'd, I'd keep the one that I pulled earlier technical deal there's something going on with my ring light I have a huge huge like dinner plate size ring light that sits off this way and Every once in a while, it's just turning off on its own. So that screwed up the last video. Hopefully, we got it fixed and it's not going to do that again. So here was what was pulled. Be someone's sunshine when their skies are gray. I think that's perfect. Uh, a perfect thing for what I want to talk about today. And um, and it's true. You know, if... You never know what... Like I say at the end of every video, you never know what... what the the effect of just smiling at somebody as you walk by them today have right you just don't oh also towards the end of this video i'm going to show you the stuff that was made from yesterday's uh makumi uh if you if you'll recall i was talking about oh, my arm hurts i was talking about um a uh aurora borealis project yeah screwed that one up so that one the garbage that's why i didn't show anything or talk about it at all i have to uh try that one again and uh yeah that one that was just a disaster <laughs> on my end oh my gosh it was horrible uh so yeah that's why a few of you've been like hey what happened yeah well <laughs> it sucked so it was awful oh my gosh didn't even work right and the resin didn't sit right and oh it's just annoying as heck so um I wanted to talk a little bit about what Natasha's going through. Um, I was listening to her for a little while this morning while I was while I was sanding and buffing, and um, you know, you don't ha just because you're subscribed to a channel, you know, doesn't mean you have to be be there for life, right? I mean, if you don't like the content or for whatever reason you decide to go, then you go, right? It's not a big deal. And I know it's not a big deal to Natasha under normal circumstances because subs come and go. Correct? But here's the thing. When, when you have somebody who you were really close friends with and, and, uh, and they leave and they go to one of your, and I say rival like this because I don't think that just because two people have a YouTube channel that they're rivals, um, I, cause I think that there's a place for everybody on YouTube. Um, but they're, you know, if they've done something horrible or participated in the doing of something horrible against you, uh, or your family, right? Well, it's kind of a slap in the face if, if somebody runs over to there and, and I'm not, I don't understand why these people who are leaving, why they just don't be on their own why do they have to go especially people who have a channel already um why why do you have to run over to where you know you're gonna do the most hurt does that make sense i i don't i don't i don't i can't figure that out and then to go over and be like well i was told who to like and, and who to to be a friend with or, or whatever Okay, first thing that tells me, because I've seen it happen, not, not just with people in Natasha's chat, but I've seen it happen in other places. And the first thing that tells me is, you can't think on your own. You're, that you're telling to everybody what you, if that truly happened, that means you can't think on your own and make your own decisions. So, um, immediately I'd be like, oh, that's bullcrap. That's bullcrap. Because nobody's willingly going to admit if they were, if they were indeed like brainwashed by somebody or what have you on who to think and, and how to feel and who to, to, um, 
uh, whose chats to hang out in or whatever, uh, you're not going to go and, oh, yeah, I was, uh, you know, I was brain, well, you're really going to go tell everybody that you're that weak-minded? No. So I, I, I encourage that anybody who finds themselves in a position where they're sitting somewhere and somebody comes over in from whatever chat, doesn't matter, back and forth, whatever, right, and says, oh, well, you know, I'm really sorry. I was just, uh, you know, I was doing what I was told and blah, 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 right away, call BS, right? I mean, seriously, look at that and go, okay, so is the problem really lying with them or the creator they supposedly got away from? Yeah, but the problems nine times out of ten is going to lie with them. It's just, it's it's ridiculous. It's it, To me, it's ridiculous. You know, I don't understand if you're just, just, you know, if you're done being a moderator or being a subscriber to somebody, just leave. Right? Don't, you know, why do you, you have to run over to somewhere else? And then that makes it different because people said, well, you know, what if, if they really like that other person or whatever, or there's friends in that chat and they want to spend time with them and they don't like Natasha, so blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, or whoever. Okay, so here's the deal on that. Again, no, I, I, I would never tell anybody where they can go and where they can't go. Okay. And I don't feel like Natasha's doing that either. But, you know, I don't know. I, I It's not... I'm not privy to all conversations, but I just don't see her being that upset. And But I, I can understand if somebody did something horrible to me and they bailed and decided that, or, and, and not that they bailed, but if somebody did something horrible to me and somebody, especially who's a mod that I trusted, ran over there knowing, knowing that what was done was lies or whatever. Yeah, no. Nope, nope. You guys have heard me say it. I'm going to say it again. Channel Chameleons. That's my name for these people that I've made up because they go from chat to ch from chat to chat to content creator, content creator, and they say what they think needs to be heard at the time. They adapt to the surroundings, like hate bonding or love bombing, right? They just adapt to that, and they'll say whatever they think that the other subs or the creator wants them, wants to hear, right? And... Uh, you know, you can't trust, you can't trust, um, chameleon, channel chameleons, because they'll be in your channel saying one thing, and then they'll be in somebody else's channel reading the room there and, you know, um, showing that they don't have a mind or can't stand on their own and say, hey, this is wrong, or hey, you know, no, I may like you, but I'm not going to go over there because you said this, and I don't think that's right, or, you know what I mean? So, that wasn't even the original topic I wanted to talk about today. Um, what I wanted to talk about today is um, anxiety and dealing with family or friends who don't respect it. Um, now, I'm not saying that that happens to everybody who's got an anxiety or panic or any kind of mental illness, really. That, oh, you're going to have family members that aren't going to support you. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that, but there are times... Um, that I'm sure, and I'm sure there's probably some people here that watch me uh, have gone through this where they, you know, they've got a family member or a friend who doesn't understand the, the, the limitations they have because of a mental illness. And so they, um, they end up disrespecting. And I don't mean the things that are done on accident where somebody's like, hey, you know, Please don't say that because blah, blah, blah. And the person says, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm not talking about like that. I'm talking about the people who know that what they're saying is harmful, yet they're still going to say it. Okay? Um, there's going to be people that you're going to find in your travels, whether they be family or friends, that are not going to understand what's happening, especially with an anxiety disorder. And they're going to be not so nice. Whether they're meaning to or not, I don't know. But... The only thing you can do at that point is you can make a decision. Do I educate this person on what I'm going through or do I just not say anything? Or do I just remove the person from my contacts and, you know, what have you. And just don't have anything else to do with them. Um, a lot of people use phrases I've talked about before with, well, you should be grateful that. Or at least you don't have that. 
or it could be worse that. Um, when you do that, I know a lot of people mean well, but you're not, you're not helping anybody. Okay. Um, in fact, what you're doing is you're saying that, yeah, I hear you I hear you've got a problem and that may be so, but it's trivial compared to this. When you say, when people say to you or you say to somebody, you know, um, well, it could be worse. You could be, you know, not alive or you could be. What what that's literally saying, even though you don't mean to, but what it literally says is, well, your problems, other people's problems are worse than yours. Be glad you don't have them. Well, there's always going to be somebody else with a worse problem than somebody else. You know what I mean? This isn't a competition. It's just, it's not a competition. And um, and I've encountered family and friends. Uh, I have, a, in fact, a whole bunch of family on my dad's side who's who's this way that I've had to remove myself from because they're they're very toxic in their belief that, um, it's your brain, so you should be able to handle it. You should be able to control whatever's going on in it and, you know, end of story. And that's not always the case. So, ding, ding. So, um, I don't know what, why that just made a noise. I have no idea what's going on. Sorry, it's that old phone that I, that's weird. Anyway, so, you know, you, you have a choice to make, you know, is, is it, is it going to harm you? How are you going to feel? And I can't tell you which way to go, right? Because it's all you. You know, um, I will say that there is nothing wrong if you have toxic family members. There is nothing wrong with limiting your exposure to them or your contact with them. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. People will tell you, well, yeah, but that's so-and-so's family. It doesn't matter so-and-so's family if they're a toxic piece of, well, POS, right? It just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So... You know, my suggestion, what I do personally, and I'm not saying this works for everybody or that anybody should do this. I'm just saying that when when it's happened before, where I've had, uh, um, we'll say friends first off that have you know said, well, you know, you just need you just need to go out in the woods. You just need to become one with nature. You just need to de-stress and go hang out over here or whatever. Okay, again, they mean well, right? And how you know they can mean well is if you say, that, that's not really going to do it, but thanks. And they're like, oh, okay, well, I'm sorry, or something along the lines, right? But then you have the ones that are like, you know, and that this is literally something that happened to me a few years ago on Facebook with one of, one of my family member's friends. Uh, the, the family member uh, that I was really close, that I'm really close to was saying how they, you know, are feeling and that. Things are just kind of, you know, blah right now. And that person literally, and they were like, do you think I, you know, I mean, I wonder if I'm going to have to get medication or something. I just cannot seem to get myself out of this, this funk. And this other person went in and was like, you know, literally, you just need to work out more. You just need to go to a gym more, you know. And, and while a gym, uh, working out, um, it's, it's studies have shown that it releases um, things into your brain that make you feel happy right? Any exercise does. And so, <clears throat> but when I said, you know, yeah, that this goes a little bit deeper than that. You know, this isn't just a, I'm having a few bad days. You know, this is a, a clinical depression type thing. And then the person, you know, just freaked out on me. Oh, this is, you know, I, you just want people to have, take medication. It's ridiculous. I don't even take medication uh, because I can't. But anyway, so, you know, it's, it's hard it's hard to know what you should do after you've said, hey, you know, nicely, you know, I, I don't appreciate this or that kind of hurts me and this is why. And if they're, they continue to be jerks, well, then, you know, you have a choice to make. And, and it, not all the, that choice is different for every single person. You know, um, I can't tell you what that choice should be. You just have to do what you're comfortable at, right? But you have to take care of you. And if there is toxicity around you, it's not, it's not going to help at all, right? So, for me, it, the, choice was, <laughs> the choice was really easy for me with my dad's side of the family because they just, they, they were gone. They were just like, I didn't have to get rid of them. They did it themselves. They were like, yeah, we want nothing to do with you. Bye, you know, and that's fine. Um. 
I do have family members and friends that I've said a million times, hey, you know, please don't say that because it's not true or it doesn't help or whatever. And, I, and, and for me, it all depends. Like if it's somebody that I'm seeing every day, a lot during a day, and if I can't get them to respect the fact that I have a mental illness, they don't have to understand it. They just have to respect the fact that it's there, right? Um, if it's somebody I'm seeing every day that I'm going to, I, for me, this isn't for everybody, I'm going to have to, you know, lessen my exposure to them because it just, it, it just doesn't help. And it's hard. It's hard when, um, especially the older generation, when I mean older, I mean like 60s, 70s, you know, and above, that when it comes to mental health, because um, a lot of them were raised with the whole, you know, you take care of your own crap. You don't go to a therapist or a counselor or anything like that to talk about what's going on. And you don't need medications, you know, whatever, what, whatever. So it's hard. You know, I, I, I've got some family members, you know, that I'm just like, Ugh. let me explain again why I can't do that or why I can't do this or whatever. Um, and like I said, you know, there's, it, it's, it's, each person is different. Each comment is different, but um, it's hard. It's hard. Um, I personally, I, I would, you know, I think counseling and therapy and stuff like that is great because it gives you somebody to talk to who is unbiased. You know, they're not a family member, so you're not going to feel like, oh, are they just saying something to make me feel nice? You know what I mean? Um, but that, like I said, that's just me. And some people don't have the luxury of being able to afford. Um, because I'm disabled, I'm on state-run insurance. So I'm able to do that, thankfully, um, if I need to. Uh, so yeah, you know, it's all in, it's all in how you feel like, you know, how it affects you on the daily or, or whatever, you know, um, and this isn't, I'm ta not talking about like, you know, surround yourself with positivity because everybody has a bad day. How many times y'all heard me say that? It's not always going to be puppies, unicorns and rainbows. Some days are just going to be like, it seems like the whole world's out to get you or, or whatever can go wrong is going wrong. And you know. It just is what it is. So it's important, um, I think, to find support when those kind of things happen. And that support could come in the form of um, a, a, you know, um, a group therapy, uh, a therapist, one-on-one -on -one therapist, um, friends, online and offline. You know, uh, there's nothing wrong. People will tell you, oh, you know. People on the internet aren't really your friends. And, you know, is that true with some things? Well, just like in real life, yeah, you're going to have people that are going to pretend to be your friends that, when they aren't. But, you know, you're going to you're, you're gonna find the ones that are genuine, you know. And, and when they do, or when you do, um, and if they are genuine, they're, they're going to be there for you when you're having days where you're just like, ugh, you know. Um, and there's always here. You know, you can always, you know, some people, it just, I have, I have a ton of people who leave me email every day that say, hey, you know, I don't talk in chat um, for whatever reason, uh, but, you know, I listen to, to, to what you say, or I shouldn't say listen, I hear, um, I hear you and I tune in and, and uh, you know, um, sometimes, sometimes that's just all people need. They just need to know that there's somebody else out there like them. Right, that even if it's not the exact same circum. I remember how how happy I was because you got to remember when I was I'm fifty. I'm gonna be fifty two next month or fifty three. I <laughs> one of those numbers um, here in just a couple in a, in about three weeks. And um, I have been dealing with this anxiety problem my whole life. We just didn't know what it was. But when it got super bad, when it got to the point where I got agoraphobia, which is the fear of like going outside or, or you know, leaving your home. Um, whew, that's warm light. When I got, um, those things started to happen. That's when I knew, you know, I need to go, I need to go to a doctor or something because something's not right. And we thought, I, we thought it was a physical problem I was having. And after, you know, all these tests and everything, come to find out it wasn't. It was a panic and anxiety disorder along with some other underlying mental illness disorders right so I went through I had doctors older doctors I in fact I still have a letter you guys from 1994 95 um, of a doctor saying you know 
I, you know, this is our, my, this letter is to terminate our patient doctor relationship. Um, I can't help somebody who is just looking for attention or who's making things up or, you know, I mean, just, yeah, not, not real great stuff. Right. Um, so <clears throat> it was hard back then. I mean, we knew about anxiety and we knew people about mental health, but it wasn't like it is now. Um, when, when I first got diagnosed, um, now it's more accepted that people have mental health disorders and that people, that there are differing, you know, levels, even of, even within the same diagnosis, you know, but I'll never forget because my first, my very first ever counselor, her name was Simone and she was like, you know, Shannon, I want you to, uh, and like, and the internet was just now starting around this time, right? I mean, we had like, you had like um, modems and stuff that you called in with, but the World Wide Web was still just a baby. I mean, just really super. You had to, to get it on the internet, you had to go through a windsocket. It was just this whole crazy thing, right? Not like how it is today where just, boop, there you are, you know, right? So she had said, you know, why don't you come to... Um, a group therapy night and you don't have to talk you know just just come in and, and see what it's like and, and listen to other people and I was like no 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 I don't I don't feel comfortable with that and stuff and so she's like okay well um, there's this little thing I, I'm doing online um, why don't you just swing in you don't even have to talk I just want you to look and you guys I cannot tell you the difference that made in my life because I thought I was crazy I thought I was going, that I was losing my mind and that it was only going to be a matter of time before I got locked up or whatever because there was no way in the world that anybody could feel or have the same issues that I do or have to deal with them in the same way that I do. So once that happened, once I was like listening to people who had, who had outlandish phobias, and I say outlandish phobias because I have outlandish phobias. Um, but they are phobias nonetheless, and uh, they affect my life on the daily. And, you know, it, it gave me a new respect for myself, for what I was going through, and for what other people go through. Like I said, I've, I've known people with some, some phobias that I would be like, wow, you know, that's it's strange to, that, that they're afraid of that. But I would never in a million years make fun of it or think, well, oh, that's weird or anything like that, because let me tell you, I know what it feels like when people are like, you're afraid of what? Well, that's kind of strange, you know. But so when you're around other people that know what it's like, it it can be so relieving and so reassuring to know that you're not the only one out there. You're not the only one suffering from a mental illness. You're not the only one who may have a certain fear. Um, you know, everybody... Uh, Everybody has things that are specific to them, and uh, but it, it does help to know that you have somebody that even if you don't talk, that you just listen to. And that could be me, or it could be a therapist, or you could call the, the text number that is now escaping my mind that I usually have, right? That talks about, um, I think it's, well, I don't want to get, I, I don't want to guess because if I was wrong, that would be really bad, but. You know, uh, just know that what you're going through, um, and if you're having a hard time with family believing you or friends or whatever, what you're going through, um, what you're feeling, you're valid in feeling that. Um, your feelings do matter. Um, and just just know that even if it's not me that you listen to, you know, you can, you can do... Um, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you can do like a Facebook search or whatever, or an internet search and you can find, um, hold on just one second. Hey hon, I'm right in the middle of a video, but my stuff is being delivered to the front porch. So if you could exchange, that would be great. Sorry about that guys. Anyway, so, um, even if it's not me, if it's, you know, just somebody else you listen to, do a search on Facebook for anxiety groups or whatever, right? PTSD groups, you know, what have you. Um, I, I really encourage you to do that. You don't ever have to participate. If the group is, is a good group, you know, they'll tell you, you don't ever have to participate. 
but it just it, just knowing that there's someone else out there uh, even if it's just one other person right it makes a huge huge difference this is why it's important that we talk about mental health and try to remove that stigma right uh, and and because and, mental health does have a stigma you know it does I'm not gonna lie you know um, people think you're less than like I mentioned before they think because it's your brain brain you should be able to control it so um, you know people will think that uh, you're not you're what's worth like you're not you're not good enough and you are you are good enough no matter what you're going through you're good enough um but there's going to be people you know that with the stigma of mental health that's what they're going to think they're going to think you're not good enough or you're less than or um or what have you but you're not you know we we wouldn't come up to a person with cancer and say you're less than you're you know and it's the same it's the same thing with mental illness in, in the sense that we shouldn't come up and make fun of people or go at them because of their mental illness. Um, well, oh, I'm sorry, I went bloop because my husband said something. Now I'm like, bloop. anyway, um, we shouldn't go at somebody, uh, for you know, for their mental, mental illnesses or whatever, like it's something that they can control or that's their fault. You know, you wouldn't do that to somebody with cancer. You wouldn't do that to somebody who's missing limbs or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, just because the majority of people may be able to, to control how their brain works, right? It doesn't mean that those of us who with anxiety and stuff can't. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm, well, I'm, what I mean can't is, I mean, it doesn't mean that we can't be like everybody else. It just means that... Um, you know, we have something going on, whether it's just psychological, whether it's also physical, you know, um, some, some psychological problems have to have medicine, right? I'm no expert, like I've said a million times, but, um, in fact, I'm going to say it again, I'm not a therapist, counselor, or, or doctor of any kind. I suffer from mental illness and I like to talk about my experiences with it and share my opinions on it. And I'll, if I remember, I'll try and put that in a thing. But those of you who are regulars, you guys know that. You know I'm just an ordinary Joe, uh, just like you guys are. Um, and you are worthy, no matter what somebody may say to you, you are worthy. You are, um, you are good enough. Even if you, have, if you have family that says you're not good enough because of whatever it is that you're going through with your mental health, then I'm your family now. I'll be your family. And I say that loosely mean because I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to brainwash anybody. But you know what I mean. You know, uh, you're safe talking to, to me. You're safe just listening. You know, um, but like I said, sometimes it just helps to know that somebody's out there like you. Okay, so I feel my wig slide off. I'm spread off since I'm going to go and expose, expose my yucky hairs. Okay, so if y'all remember, I don't have it right here. I don't think. Let me see if it's right behind me. I can't reach it. Can I? Can I? Can I? Um, where'd it go? Sorry. I just had it in my hand. Just a, just a little bit ago. Now I can't find it. That's going to annoy me to no end. Yes, it will. Anyway, well. What's that heck? Okay, so if you watched it, if you watched yesterday's video, you saw me do a Makumi Gane pattern that has apparently just up and ran. Oh, here it is. It was in the, it was in the wrong thing. <laughs> um, and I'm about to show you some of the things we made from it. So here's the, the block that we um, were messing with yesterday. <laughs> You see it through the plastic there, yeah? So this is the block we were messing with yesterday, right? And uh, so I cut it out in the shapes that I wanted, baked it, I plunged it into an ice bath, and uh, I do that anytime I'm using uh, transparent clay 
in a project um, that has that foil or like those little ice flakes I showed you anytime uh, I do that I plunge it into ice water afterwards because I think it makes the translucent more translucent um, which you know in layman's terms just means you can see through it a little bit better right so um, I made some stuff and I am gonna put them on my Etsy um, I think they're they're I think they're gorgeous but you say so myself oh my goodness my hip. I gotta get my chair readjusted. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna show you. I hope the light's okay. Here is the flower pendants. Hold on here. Let me see if I can't. Mm -hmm. Nope. All right. Oops. Sorry, guys. Like I said. Um, get my chair adjusted or something okay there we go see it turned out beautifully these were done with all pinks except for um, one color that was a darker like a like a mauve or a burgundy and I did that so you can see that the you wouldn't be able to see the um, the pattern very well let me see we have rearranged our lighting a little bit see if it'd get any better Apparently it's not. Okay, hold on. But these are see-through like the other ones were. I, I, I lied yesterday. I said I was going to put them on a black background. I didn't because I, I really like the trans, the translucency, and being able to. Yeah, can you see through there? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's that right. And then I made matching earrings to go with it. Just open them up a little bit so you can see them. Yeah. So I made little earrings so it's a set. There we go. Um, I'll put pictures in my uh, community post. And uh, also, and that they'll be better because there'll be more light. See, I'm, thanks to a certain person, I can't utilize the natural light from my window with my stuff very well because um, if they find out where I live, which would, because I, there's telltale, telltale markers outside my window, they would then announce my address all over, you know, the internet, so... Um, and y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. So, okay. So there are these. <clears throat> and these are just some, and, and again, the backs on all these are just unfinished, the transparent clay backs. Um, and then here's a pendant that I have yet to put on a cord, but. Well, you can kind of see the see throughness in that one, huh? The see throughness, but you know what I mean. Look at that. Um, and then another pendant that I have to put on a cord. <laughs> Come on now. There we go. Isn't that pretty? And I made this big old honking pendant here um this one was fun i liked this it's a a dog paw pendant that i obviously outlined oops parts of it in in black so you can see the detail of the paw right and again see through um can't really I wish I could get it to. No, that's not gonna work. Sorry, big light, guys. Big light. Sorry, sorry, sorry. See it? Some translucence. But anyway, so uh, that's my work light. That's really starting to get on my nerves. I don't know why is it so dark in here. I wonder. If my I have one of those um, light socket light things, in, you know, on the ceiling, but it has three light bulbs in it. So I'm wondering one went out. Cause it's so dark. Anyway, I hope you guys have been able to see the stuff, but like I said, I'll put them, I'll, I'll 
put the pictures I took um, that has better lighting and I'll put them on my um, what do you call it community okay so I'm gonna let you guys go I've yabbered en enough um, I love you guys hang in there uh, I want to thank everybody for subscribing um, we're sitting at six I, I ultra I, I fluctuate between like 679 and 683 um, I appreciate everybody who uh, um, has subscribed or told their friends to subscribe um, means a lot to me um, I'm looking now to see I still have my oh, I'm looking at the stats I still have my um, giveaway going to where when I hit a thousand person who is my thousandth customer that buys something from my Etsy shop will get a like this little see-through purse thing um, of uh, some of my creations filled up all in there so let me see um, we are at 900 I better write this down 936 sales so um, whoever is a thousandth is going to get um, what I say 936 is going to get quite a nice uh, bag of goodies. 28. So uh, I try to keep track of how this is going here. So um, yeah, um, you guys want to watch me make something or what have, have you? You guys' input input is important to me. So just let me know. All right, I love you guys. Um, hug somebody today, love on them, smile at somebody. Uh, what the sticker say? It be someone's sunshine when it's cloudy for them or something. But you know what I mean, right? You know how that goes. All right, I love you guys. Um, and I'm going to try and do a live uh, later this afternoon, early evening. You know, fingers crossed. Uh, I'm still really, I'm still really worried about my about my kid. We'll, we'll find out more information tomorrow, so I'm kind of dreading tomorrow. But anyway, all right, I love you guys, and uh, I'll talk to you later.